Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Abroads. Today I am going to show you how can we use data seeding in ASP.NET Core. Okay, and as you can see on the screen, yes, there are two ways one by model and by custom. So let's move ahead without wasting time. So we will discuss data seeding with the help of model seed data, and second way is custom initialization logic. Okay, so both have its advantages and disadvantages and i will also show you how you can use fluent api to shape your db okay and this tutorial is for beginners all the important links are given in the description of this video now what data seeding is data seeding is a process of populating a database with an initial set of data there are several ways this can be accomplished in anti framework core with the help of model seed data which is good for temporary data for testing and also data that depends on database state in that case also model seed data is important and it is very useful and another case is if your data is large you can uh, use it with the help of migrating uh, object of entity and when your data is crucial we are using on model creating uh, method and we are overriding this one and in this we are passing three book objects that we want to use in our database for seeding and the drawback or you can say uh, the, um, the cons of this approach is every time you are making any changes in your um, model so you have to create migration every time and because you want to seed the DB every time okay so that's a important point for this and yes, uh, migrations are always risky when you are dealing with the production environment. So keep these two points in mind before moving ahead for using model seed data. Let's switch to Visual Studio to show you how actually model seed data works. This is my Visual Studio and this is the same solution on which I was working earlier in my all the SP.NET Core sessions. If you are new to this session, let me quickly go through you the application on which we are working. This is the ASP.NET Core application with Entity Framework and we are using asynchronous programming here. If you are interested in this solution, the link of GitHub repo is given in the description of this video. Just check out that one. If you have any suggestion, just mention there. Okay. So this is a simple ASP.NET Core application where we have one book controller. We have a data access where we are using the repository pattern as well. We have book context here, okay, and as a model, we are using book model and we are using the pure entity framework core uh, generated views which are create, delete, detail, and edit and index one, okay, and we are also using the code first approach with the help of uh, migration only. We are making all these changes, okay. So now important point is in DB context what actually we need to do we need to make changes in this on model creating method if we are using model seed data okay if let me show you how this application is working as of now and what is the current state of data in database as you can see this application is working perfectly fine so let me stop this okay and also let me show you the state of the data database let me show you what data we have okay you can see now we have three records now we want to see data with the help of model so let me uh, delete the database completely because we want to perform this action from the scratch okay close existing connection and hit ok now it is deleting my book books database ok now if I refresh this one so now there is no book database let's go back to Visual studio ok let me paste the changes here and if I uncomment this one so what we are doing here we are using the model builder and in that we are creating uh, entity and calling the has method which says it will configure this entity to have seed data and it is used to generate data motion migration 
okay so this is very important method and in that we are passing four instances okay so let me make the correction here it will be three okay so these four entries will be there in our database so let me save the changes and another important point is we have to perform the migration okay as you can see there is no migration on our right hand side and there was no migration in our database okay let's move to the package manager console now we have to add migration at migration so it is asking for a name okay let me give it initial okay hit enter build started okay now you can see build succeeded and it is also showing if you want to remove this we have to use this command and behind the scene let me pin this tab you can see now migration folder is created and in that we have our class which is responsible for applying all the changes to the database okay you can see three entries are here okay so next command is update database okay yeah that requires hash hit enter so it is applying the database it will create the database and i will show you uh, on the back end okay now it's done let me uh, go back to sql server so this is this is the previous editor but there is no database but let me refresh this so now we can see now we have box database and if i perform this select star so uh, remember there are three different entities but now we are performing we have just raised a new one so now we can see there are four new entries books okay tables now we can see we have migration history table okay so if i select from migration history fi so we can see now there's a one migration okay so and we just use the model c data very simple okay so now now we can see our database is ready to work with the uh, default data so let me run this application to show you how it's working as of now now we can see now we have four entries and if i perform edit everything is working as expected if i save here so things are working so this is the way we can uh, see data with the help of models okay let's close this let's go back to the presentation to discuss the second type of uh, model data seeding now the next type is custom initialization logic a straightforward and powerful way to perform data seeding is to use dbcontext.save changes and before uh, the main application logic begins execution we have created a one initialize method in that we are passing context and creating new uh, array of book in that we are passing uh, book objects uh, by creating them and at the end we are adding those uh, books in the context and save changes so this piece of code will auto generate the data in database don't worry if these points are not clear i will show you in the visual studio editor so let's switch to visual studio to implement this now we have discussed earlier how we can uh, see data with the help of models so let me close this okay and now we are not going to add data from here okay let me comment this one and we don't want to perform any migration okay so if you want to uh, remove migration so we know the command remove migration but if the change is already applied on the database so first we have to remove all those entries from the back end okay so let's go back to the sql server management studio because we want to perform from scratch let me delete this one delete from okay execute perfect enter now there is now there is no entry now let's go back to the application now let me perform this remove migration command okay remove migration hit enter okay because we have removed the uh, migration entry from the back end okay now okay yes it is successfully completed and now we can see on the right hand side there is no migration history 
let me delete this book database completely okay so close existing connection click ok now let me refresh this now you can see there is no books database okay let's go back to the application to perform our custom logic to initialize the uh, data so i already made some changes to showcase you so we are in the program class this is the main method this is the starting point of the sp.net core application and here what we are doing here we are using the host okay to uh, initialize the data and if you will see the method that i have created in that you will see we are using the host for creating a, a scope okay which says a create new i service scope that can be used to resolve a scoped service so we are using this container uh, to create the scope from the scope itself we are using the service provider to initialize the data from the services we are getting the book context after fetching the book context we are passing this context uh, variable to db initializer class and in, from that we are calling initialize method so i have created that that class in db initializer okay just to uh, just for the separation of concern purpose just to keep it separately we are making sure we have a database created okay if there is any record already exist then no need to do anything return from here and if there is no data then it will come here create new create three record and add into a database and call the save changes method okay let me close this if you need this piece of code just check out the link in the description of this video of github repo okay so now we call this one and if there is any exception we are logging this one okay now we have uncommented this one and we have checked there is no data in our database okay so let me run this application because now there is no migration required so let me run my application see this is working as expected if i perform any changes on this application it is working perfectly fine okay so this is the way we can perform uh, data seeding with the help of model or with the help of custom logic so if you want to shape your uh, database from your code so i hope you are already aware there are two, two ways one is data annotation and one is fluent api okay so these two options provided by the entity framework core and fluent api we can change the schema from dbo uh, like reduce the column size change the column name or adding a new column in db context class and you have to override the on model creating method with the help of that you can perform all these changes if you are working with fluent api and using this has the advantage that you can keep the entity type simple without adding any attribute and the fluent api also gives you more options then you have with applying attribute or features compared to the annotation asynchronous programming is a default mode for asp.net core and entity framework core okay i hope you like this video if you have any question any comment any suggestion you can drop into the comment box i will try to reply as soon as possible and your feedback is very important that's the only inspiration for me to create such, such informative video in if you like my hard work hit on the thumbs up and share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe bye bye